Hey Satya, you look tense today. Yeah man, uh, last week my manager asked me to build a system, uh, a system in a distributed environment. And so far I haven't done anything and I need to present tomorrow. Oh, that's scary. So what kind of system are you trying to build? Do you want it to be highly available, highly, very consistent? Or do you want it to be resilient to network partition? So it's like, what? I don't even know what are these. Can you explain? So you haven't thought about the cap theorem, like what kind of system you want to build? No, I haven't thought of that. What's that? Uh, let me tell you what the cap theorem is. Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we are diving into one of the most fundamental concepts in distributed systems, the cap theorem. Now imagine you are building the next big social media app. You want to become the owner of Instagram again. Or maybe just like Satya, you want to build a crazy system that's able to survive all hardships and do all amazing things that you wish in a distributed system. And Let's say it, you also wanted to handle millions of users on every part of the world without a hiccup. Sounds great, right? But here's the catch. Achieving all that is a lot harder than it seems. Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, all of them were not built in a single day. And that's where the cap theorem comes in. Now you must be wondering what CAP individually mean. So C means consistency. A means availability and P means partition tolerance. Now I'll state the cap theorem. The cap theorem states that in a distributed system, you can only guarantee two out of the three key properties, which are consistency, availability and partition tolerance. So let's break down what each of these mean. Consistency means that Everyone who is using the system or sending a request to the system sees the same data. Think of it like a bank account balance. If you are on one branch of the bank and your mother is on the another branch of the bank, both of them should see the account balance as the same one. If you immediately withdraw an amount, then the other branch should also see that an amount was withdrawn and no action should be allowed to perform before that. Uh, next is availability. Availability means that the system is always up and running and it's always ready to respond to your request. Whether it responds with a uh, response with the right response or it gives you an error if your request is incorrect. Think of it like Instagram's like system. If you are on Instagram and you are sending a like, that does not mean that someone else on Instagram should wait till your like is reflected on all servers they should also be able to like a post. Third is partition tolerance. Now this one is a little tricky to understand. What partition tolerance means is that a system continues to operate even if there's a network failure between the nodes. That means the nodes in the distributed system are split into isolated groups. So for this, I'll go into a little technical example. So think of it like MongoDB. In MongoDB, we have a master slave architecture. So we have one master which takes in all the rights and then there are multiple slaves. What happens here is that let's say there's a network problem and the master is un un unable to communicate with any of the slaves. So let's say there is a partition in the network. Now what MongoDB does is it identifies that there is a partition in the network and now it takes it, it logs it checks the logs and sees which system or which slave has the latest data and then it upgrades the slave to a master and connects it to the other slaves. In between this, there is a loss of availability for the system but it ensures that a system is auto recoverable and is partition tolerant and all reads will now be allowed via this new master slave architecture. That's interesting. I want to build my system using all three of them. So that's the neat part. You don't. You can't have all three of them together. Okay. And that is what the cap theorem states. So let me break it down for you. Okay. So for example, in the bank system, so as I already mentioned, you can only have two at the same time. So you can either have CA, CP or AP systems. 
in the example of bank that we mentioned bank systems are usually cp systems that is because even if there's a partition in the uh, server we shouldn't be uh, the bank system should be tolerant and it should be able to recover itself and be up and running again and as i already mentioned it should be consistent consistent but imagine if you are uh, trying to be partition tolerant and consistent then you can't be available because your nodes will take some time to recover and at that point in time your bank server will go down that is what you all must have also seen when you try to pay a upi payment and it says that your bank server is down try again after some time next is instagram now instagram is mostly an ap system what that means is it's available and it's partition tolerant so as i already mentioned it's available because uh, the likes that you're sending in you are always able to send in and same for partition tolerance even if the half portion of instagram goes down uh, it recovers it itself and there is no loss of data that essentially occurs for the users uh, think of it like you're trying to upload a photo and your server goes down instagram recovers and reroutes your you reroutes your uh, request to a different server and the network uh, loss is recovered and for partition tolerance as i mentioned for mongodb mongodb is also uh, essentially a, a cp system which means that it tries to uh, be consistent and partition tolerant as well so in the example that i mentioned for master slave node we gave away availability which is for the reason that if the master goes down we stop the system to re re receive any new requests and the system goes into recovery mode to solve the partition tolerance problem and it stays consistent because no new data is being served from the, any of the slaves when the system is down and only when the system is back up and running the data is served and by that time s1 s2 and s3 are all in sync and there is no loss of data so that means it's a consistent system and it's also partition tolerant so how do i decide which one to use which two of these properties to prioritize so that depends on the needs of your application as i mentioned you need to understand what you're trying to build is consistency and partition tolerant important to you or do you want the system to be highly available or do you also want the system to be partition tolerant from any sort of problems that might occur in the network between the distributed nodes now you must be wondering that why did i not mention a ca system now think of it like what would happen in a ca system you also want it to be 100% available and you also want it to be consistent just a small example even if you have a server with two nodes n1 and n2 a write happens on n1 and it has to be copied to n2 now this will take some time but what if uh, because you want to build a highly available system n2 should still be allowing reads now because n1 and n2 are not yet in sync and you still allowed a read here the consistency is not taken into consideration this is a simple example which says that only ca is possible when you have just a single uh, node and on that node you are allowing both reads and writes and that is only when you can make a ca system practically so essentially for a distributed system having ca is not practically possible so cap theorem is in general a very complex topic and there is a lot more to it than what we have covered here but hopefully this gives you a good understanding of the fundamental challenges of building a distributed system thank you for listening to me and i hope satya is able to build a system that he really wants like please like share and subscribe to our channel